fall fresh on me. Make me, mold me, feel me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on, on me. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I better not sing that one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. All right. For he is Lord, he is Lord, he has risen from the dead, and he is Lord, every shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ he is Lord come on say it with me for he is Lord Come on, y'all, help me. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ, he is Lord. Now, everybody can't say that. He's my Lord. Is he your Lord? He's my Lord. Come on, he has risen. He has risen from the dead. And he's my Lord. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ he is Lord. One last time, come on. He's my Lord. Come on, y'all. He's my Lord. He has risen from the dead, and he's my Lord. Every knee shall bow. Come on, and every confess that Jesus Christ
Christ, he is Lord. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the living God. He is Lord. Everything in history either looks to Christ coming or Christ has already been here. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is master. He reigns supreme. He rules. Hallelujah. There's no sickness, no disease that cannot that does not bow to the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's no angel, no demon, no devil in hell coming out of hell, around hell. No angel that will not bow to the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the king. He is the Lord. He is master. He reigns supreme. He rules. Hallelujah. Oh, Yadabashaya. Oh, hallelujah. I praise him. In the year 2021, this is the year to bless the Lord. In the year 2021, this is the year to praise the Lord. You done came from 2020 over to 2021, and you mean to tell me you're going to sit all cool and cute and pretty and sedity and act it all like, listen here, it was because of your goodness and ain't nothing but the goodness of the Lord that you are here today. If you woke up this morning, it's not because of you, it's because of the goodness of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Do you not know how many people did not make it over in this uh, year? And you're going to sit there with your arms folded. You're going to sit there with your mouth closed. You ought to open up your mouth. You ought to exclaim at the top of your voice that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is master. He reigns supreme. There's nobody, nowhere, hallelujah, on the face of the earth or the universe, hallelujah, that's like him anywhere. Hallelujah. I greet you in Jesus Christ. And I'm excited today. I'm excited. I'm thrilled. Oh, hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord is worthy to be praised. Oh, my God. Oh, come on and help me praise the Lord. Come on and help me glorify the Lord. Come on and help me magnify his name and glorify him. He woke you up that you ought to praise him. The Bible says, let everything, everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. You ought to praise him. Hallelujah. If you're in Florida. Hallelujah. I give a shout out to Florida. I give a shout out to England. If you're in England, huh, you ought to praise him. You ought to glorify the king. You ought to glorify the master. You ought to glorify him. He has your life in his hands. <laughs> he not only got the little bitty baby, he got you in his hands. He got you and me, brother, in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. Praise God. Hallelujah. We used to sing this song in my church in California. Praise God. We're going to sing it today. Hallelujah. Come on. I know you don't know the words, but just act like you do. Praise the Lord. Come on. Sing it with me today. Come on here. Help me today. Here we go. We praise thee, O God, for the son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who had borne all our sins and have cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the spirit of light who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain who had borne all our sins and had cleansed every stain. 
Hallelujah, bang the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, bang the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, bang the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, bound the glory, revive us again. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we need God to revive the church, to breathe on it. The Bible says in John chapter 20 that the disciples were right there in front of Jesus and he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Then later on, after he was resurrected, he told them, Tarry here till you be endued, not with the Holy Ghost, till you be endued with power from on high. You see, yes, you need the Holy Ghost. Yes, you got to have the Holy Ghost, but you need the Holy Ghost and you need power. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Some of you listening to me today, you need power in your life. You see, the devil's not going to move because you got your name on the church row. The devil's not going to move because you got a, a, a Bible open. The devil's going to move. You see, you need power against the devil. You need power against demons and imps and principalities. You need power against sickness and disease. You need power, praise God. And Jesus told his disciples, tarry here till you be endued with power from on high. Oh, yeah, bye -bye. Hallelujah, we need that power. I don't know about you, but we need that power. I know it's the beginning of the year, but you're going to need power not only in the beginning of the year, you're going to need power in the middle of the year, and you're going to need power the rest of the year. You're going to need power all the time you're on, the, on this earth. So you're going to need power. You're going to need power in raising your children. You're going to need power, praise God, in, 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 in being a witness for Christ. You're going to need power, praise God, just to live right. Because this world is antagonistic against the things of God. This world is anti-Christ. This world, this nation, uh, where you live, where I live, hallelujah, over across the street, down the block, hallelujah, in the back alley, and on the boulevard, on the avenue, praise God, there ain't nothing but wickedness everywhere. And you and I have got to live for Jesus. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. You see, the world is dancing. The world is marching to a particular drum beat, but God wants his children to march to a totally different drum beat. It's coming from heaven. Hallelujah. It is divine. Hallelujah. And only the pure in heart. Hallelujah. Shall hear that cadence. Hallelujah. I remember when I was in high school and we used to play the drums. Praise God. There were marching bands all over out on the field. Marching bands all over the field. Praise God. But when our uh, uh, majorette uh, sounded her whistle, praise God. That meant for that particular band, the band that I was in, for us to come to attention. I came today to tell you, if you've been born again, if you've been washed with the blood of Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, and you are indwelt with the Spirit, or you are filled with the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, you are to march to a different drumbeat. You can't act like the world acts. You can't look like the world looks. You can't talk like the world talks. There ought to be a difference. The Bible says put a difference between the clean and the unclean. Stop trying to get along with everybody in the world. Stop trying to be everybody's pal, buddy, uh, friend, ace, boom, coon. Stop trying to be everybody. Listen here. You are supposed to be a child of God. You got to act like it, look like it, walk like it, and talk like it. Some of you listen to me today, you're trying to infiltrate like some kind of secret agent, like some kind of James Bond. Baby, uh-uh, no. It's time for the Christian, the believer, the child of God to come on out. Now, that don't mean we're supposed to walk around and like, look here, I'm better than you. No, we don't walk like that. No, we don't talk like that. No, we don't look like that. Hallelujah. But we have to understand that I am born again. I am saved. 
sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. I can't do what the world does. I can't talk like the world talks. When people see you, they ought to walk up to you and say, there's something about you. There's something about you that you, you don't act like we act. You don't talk. And listen, don't get offended. Don't try to uh, don't try to, to to join in with the world. Don't try to act like the world. No, uh-uh. You see, when I was coming up, hallelujah, my, my daddy and mama told me, no, you can't act like them down the street. Yeah, well, Johnny's doing this and Toby's doing that. And Fred, listen here. I don't raise no Toby. Fred don't live here. Jed don't live here. Uh-uh. You live here. You're going to act a certain way. You are a gray and you're supposed to carry yourself like a gray. As in the natural, also in the spiritual. If you call yourself a child of God, if Christ is in your life, you got to understand something. That your father is not around here. Your father is in heaven. And he's watching. His eyes are in every place beholding the evil and the good. And he's watching you and I and expecting us to live a certain way. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't mean to go down that, that avenue, but we down there now. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm excited. I want to send a shout out to so many people. Sister Susan Century, God bless you. Sister Diana Gomes, Diana Gomes, good to see you. God bless you over there in England. Y'all, listen, let's stay together. Let's, let's continue to pray for one another and hold one another up. Praise God. Time out for praying for just our house. My, me and Ted and Jed and Mo, us four and no Mo, no baby. We got to pray for other people. We got to pray that they make it through. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't want to just get to heaven and just be, me be there. No, I want to look around and say, I know that person. I know them. I know them. I, I know them. I, made it. Oh, he made it. Oh, she made it. Oh, they made it. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. All right. All right. We got to sing, sing one of my favorite songs here. Hallelujah. One, one of my favorite songs. Praise God. Where is it at? <laughs> it's my favorite song. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God I serve. All the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God I serve. What a mighty God I serve. What a mighty God I serve. All the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God I serve. Jesus is the God I serve. Jesus is the God I serve. All the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God I serve. Well, he is king of kings, and he is Lord of lords. His name is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, he is the king, he is the king of kings, and he is Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. 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 Oh, he is the king. What a mighty God I serve. What a mighty God I serve. All the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God I serve. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is the Christ. He is the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I got a 
Rabashaya. Hey, I praise him, I praise him. I thank you, Lord God. Wonderful God. Wonderful Savior. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We glorify the Lord and we praise him. Praise his holy name. Hey, He's worthy to be praised. Oh, I praise him. I bless him. I love him. I love the Lord. Oh, I love him. Do you love him? I love him. I love him. I love him. Hallelujah. If you weren't on here, I still love him. If you weren't tuning in, I still love him. I love him anyhow. Oh, he's been better to me than I've been to myself. Ah! Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, I got so many more songs we can sing here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Never ever let your problems get you down. When your problems come your way, lift your hands up high and say, Hallelujah. Anyhow. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Never ever let your problems get you down. When your problems come your way, lift your head up, smile and say, Hallelujah. Anyhow. Hallelujah. 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 Anyhow. Never ever let your problems get you down. When your problems come your way, lift your hands up high and say, Hallelujah. Anyhow. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Never ever let your problems get you down. When your problems come your way, lift your head up, smile and say, Hallelujah. Anyhow. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. He is worthy to be praised. Ayaba. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Gayaba bakahaya. Oh, turn with me to Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Turn with me to Psalm 51. We're going to try to go a little further. Y'all just keep getting me going here. I can't help it. Hey, glory to the living God. I just get so excited. Praise God. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Look at verse 12. And it says in the text, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. I'm going to say that again. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your people which are watching. I pray that you would touch and bless each and every one. I pray that this word would go forth with power, that it would break and, and destroy yokes in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord God, may your people be set free. Lord God, may souls be claimed, backsliders claimed back in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. Lord, hide me behind the cross, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, Psalm 51, verse 12, is known as a verse or a passage that took place in David's life. David, you remember, he was the king over Israel. And David had sinned with Bathsheba. David had sinned with Bathsheba. And uh, it was almost a year before Nathan came to him and told him that you are the man. You, you had a man killed. And you, 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 you took uh, that man's wife and you slept with her. Uh, it was wrong. You 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 committed sin and you you um, you 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 just did evil. You did evil. You did sin and did wrong. And so that's what took place in his life. And this Psalm fifty one is known as the avenue to get back to God, get back into fellowship with God. I want you to know something, people of God. You you and I might be saved, but are we 
fellowshipping with the Lord. You, sin, you see, sin can cause a break in the fellowship with God. Sin is missing the mark. I said it before and I say it again. Imagine a person having a bullseye on drawn on the wall uh, and they take a bow and arrow and they launch it out at that uh, bullseye. Well, if they the, the object of shooting a bow and arrow at a bullseye is to hit the middle of the mark. But when that arrow flies off somewhere else or flies off somewhere else, it's missing the mark. The mark is the center of the bullseye. And that's what sin is. Sin, you see, the bullseye is, is the glory of God in anything that we do. Some of you listen to me today. I want you to know something. You'll experience more power in your life and more blessing in your life when it's not about you, when it's about God. And so sin is missing the mark. Sin is doing what I want to do. Irregardless to what God's word says, irregardless to how God feels about that situation. And in this case, David looked at this woman bathing, whatever she was doing, out doing. And see, not just adultery, not just fornication, lying, uh, thieving, stealing, taking something that don't belong to you. Come on, y'all. All kind of sin is missing the mark. It's, it's doing what I want to do irregardless to what God's word says. Irregardless to the situation, I want to satisfy me. That's what sin is. And so David sinned with Bathsheba. But my point is this. Psalm 51 is known as the psalm to get back to God, get back into fellowship with God. Yeah, you might be saved, but are you fellowshipping with God? Are you spending some time with the Lord? God woke you up this morning, not just for you to run downstairs and get your Captain Crunch, run downstairs and get your special K or your uh, 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 get on, get your pancakes on, excuse me, get your waffles on or, or, or butter your toast or get your coffee for you to run out to the your job and work your 40, uh, 50, 60 hours a week for you to jump in your car and your house and whatever. Because I came today to tell you, baby, one day you're going to figure out you can't take none of that stuff with you. The house that you got, the car that's got your name on it. Baby, That listen here, you just loaning that car. You just using that car for a time period. Hallelujah. If you think that car is yours, try and take it with you when you leave this earth. You can't take it with you. When was the last time you were at a funeral and you saw a U-Haul following behind a hearse? Because it don't happen. They asked the question of the rich man. He had millions and millions of dollars. And they asked the question, how much money did he leave? Can I tell you something? I'm not even his accountant. I'm not even his financial advisor. But I can tell you he left every dime right here. Hallelujah. Because you can't take nothing with you. Uh, Job said, naked came I into this world and naked shall I return. But blessed be the name of the Lord. And so, but the text today, it says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. What I want to talk to you today about is the joy of the Lord. You and I are going to need that in this year coming up. We're going to need the joy of the Lord to push us through and propel us through. Some of you listen to me today. You said, listen, I can't wait till 2020 is gone. Woo! Oh, 2020, I waved it goodbye. But can I tell you something? Sometimes the stuff of last year can creep into the new year. Oh, I can't get no help up in here today. I want you to know something, people of God. Just because uh, we change from one month to the next month, just because we change from one year to the next year, does not mean that stuff that happened and stuff that took place last year can't creep into this year. And you're going to need the joy of the Lord to push you through and propel you through and help you to make it. Some of you listen to me today, oh, it's dependent on my stimulus check. Girl, when I get my stimulus check, baby, ooh, I'm going to get my stimulus check. And when I get my stimulus check, ooh, I'm going to have it going on. I'm going to be a, a shot caller, a boss man. I'm going to, listen, listen, baby, let me tell you something. Get this straight through your head. Hallelujah. Listen, you can get your stimulus check, and as soon as you deposit it, praise God. 
Hallelujah. Something from the past can creep in and take that, snatch that check right out your account. Listen, you still better have some joy. I came today to tell you, stop depending on people and things to get your joy. I want to send a shout out, praise God, to Sister uh, Brickhouse. God bless you. Hallelujah. Listen here, stop depending on things for the joy. You need the joy of the Lord. And in the new year that we're looking at, in the new year that we're in, praise God, hallelujah, verse 12 of Psalm 51 says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Listen here, we don't know what a day can bring. Listen here, when things can start out real good, but the next thing you know, things can turn. Don't talk like that, preacher. Listen here, life is life. I told you before, and I'm going to tell it to you again. You're either going to a storm, in a storm, or just come out of a storm. Now, if you're headed to a storm, you best have the joy of the Lord. If you're in a storm, you better have the joy of the Lord. And if you came out of the storm, you better look back and say, listen here, the joy of the, God's joy got me through, and I got to get prepared because, listen here, with life, I might get I might just go back into another storm. It's the joy of the Lord that is your strength, praise God, that's going to help you make it through. First of all, we got to have the joy of the Lord, the joy of our salvation. People are not glad anymore about being born again. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I'm saved. Listen here, when I think about going, listen, when I think and I read in the book of Luke, the 18th chapter, come on with me. Come on, y'all. Let's take a journey. Come on. I'm your bus driver today. Come on. I am your captain of the plane that you're flying in. Hallelujah. And we're going to take a quick little journey. Turn with me to Luke chapter, uh, I believe it's Luke chapter 18. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Well, just trust me. Anyway, I don't know about you. When I read about that man who lifted up his eyes in hell. Listen here. I don't know about you, but I'm glad today because I don't want to go to hell. Hell, listen, you might tell people to go to hell and you might give people the finger and you might say, listen here, you just go. You know where I want you to go? You go to H-E double toothpicks and you're telling them all that. But baby, you don't want to send your worst enemy to hell. Hell is a place where the presence of God is ceased. Hell is a place, praise God, where demons and devils will be torturing people for the rest of their life. Throughout eternity, you don't want to go to hell. Hell is a place of torment. Hell is a place where the worm dieth not. Hell is a place of weeping and gashing. And people will be remembering when they could have got right, but they did not. If you're watching me today, if you're listening to me today and you don't know Christ is your Lord and Savior and you come and you don't get to know him sometime in your life and you die and open up your eyes in hell, you will remember this message right here because hell is no place for you to get right. Hell is no place for you to have a place. Some people say, when I get to hell, it's going to be a party. And we go, party. Baby, listen, to hell ain't no party place. Hell is a place of torment. Hell is a place of weeping. Hell is a place of damnation. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I'm saved. I'm glad that I'm born again. That Christ went to the cross for me. I am glad about it. I'm excited about it. And so I don't mind praising the Lord and glorifying him because he loved me so much that he sent his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we ought to have the joy of salvation. And David said, Lord, restore unto me. Restore it. When I was coming up as a young man, Sister, Sister Diana, when I was coming up, I had wood shop. In high school, I had wood shop. And we would take a cabinet. And they taught me how to strip it down, Sister Brickhouse, how to strip it down, take the stain off of that cabinet. Well, once you take the stain off of that cabinet and you sand it down real good, it could have been a beat up old cabinet that was somewhere at a Goodwill store or somewhere in the back garage or something like that. But we put it up on a table. We put some kind of acid stuff on there to take the stain off of there. Then once we sanded it down real good, y'all don't hear me today. Oh my God, then I would go to the store and I would pick out a nice stain and varnish. And I put a stain on that thing with a 
the cloth and rub it down till it got in the grain of the wood. Y'all don't hear me today. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then we put some varnish on it, a shine on it. Come on here, y'all help me today. They put a shine on that cabinet, praise God. Hallelujah. And when I got through with it and put some new... New hardware on there, new handles on there, praise God, on that cabinet, praise God. Hallelujah, I could sell it, praise God. And I got a lot of money because it was a now a restored piece Hallelujah. And some of you listen to me today, that's what God needs to do for your salvation. Some of you listen to me today, you're always worried about this and worried about that. But God needs to restore your salvation. Lord, restore to me the joy of my salvation. You remember what it was when you came to know Christ as your Lord and Savior? The first day that you said, Lord, I realize that I'm a sinner and without you I'm lost. Come into my life and turn my life around. I believe that Jesus went to the cross for me. You might have been a thug. You might have been a jug. You might have been a Dudley Do-Right or a Mary Poppins. I don't know. But listen here. The Bible lets us know that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the preacher was preaching. Or maybe you were in your living room. I don't know where you were. But somehow the Holy Ghost tapped you on your shoulder and said that Jesus wants to save you. Jesus wants to get a hold of your life. And you realize that Christ went to the cross for you. You were not there, but you believe it. And you asked him to come into your life and he washed you from your sins. <laughs> he washed you from your sins, praise God. You believe that God raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. Oh my God, there was a joy that rushed into your heart. My God, you couldn't wait to tell everybody that Jesus Christ saved me from my sin. Well, that's what David is saying. David was saying, listen here, even though he had sinned, but sometimes it doesn't have to be sin. Sometimes it's just busyness. We're busy with our families, busy on our jobs, busy in church, busy in our career. You can be even busy in ministry trying to do God's will, but still in all, you need the joy of your salvation. Ah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's only what you do for Christ that's going to last. Well, not only do we need the joy of salvation, but we need the joy of communion. Not only do we need the joy of salvation, but we need the joy of communion. What do you mean by that? Well, the word communion means to fellowship. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, I will come in and sup. Communion, fellowship. Praise God. Do you remember when we first learned about the Lord's Supper? Jesus was with his disciples, praise God, and he was breaking bread with them. Hallelujah. Not only was he telling them that the this, this bread which is broken for you is my body. Uh, hallelujah. And this uh, a cup of wine, praise God. They were drinking wine. Y'all better not be drinking no wine. But anyway, they were drinking wine, praise God. Hallelujah. And it was unfermented. I know. See, Jesus was a wine. No, he was not. It was unfermented wine. You could not get drunk with that wine, praise God. But anyway, that's another message. We'll get back to that some other time, praise God. So anyway, Hallelujah. He was drinking when he was, he broke bread with them and he drank what? And anyway, but what was going on is they were fellowshipping, getting to know each other. And see, that's what God wants you to do. God wants you to get to know him. Praise God. Get to know God's likes and dislikes. Praise God. That you can start being a, a more of a judge concerning things in your life. Praise God. Some of you listen to me today. You let anything and everything go on in your life. Oh, that's not God. You let everything happen in your life and everything go on in your family and everything go on in your job. And you say, well, you know, I'm a believer and, you know, you can't be judging. And the Bible says, judge not lest ye be judged with the same judgment. That does not mean that we are not to judge. You're supposed to, hallelujah, but you got to use the word of God to judge. You got to use as far as the Holy Spirit to help you decide. Praise God. Well, look at it like this. 
You and I, praise God, if we're going to judge, it ought to be really fruit inspecting. Some of you listening to me today, the reason why there's a drag in your life, praise God, is because the people that you hang around with. you got to hang around sharp people that are trying to go for God also. You can't hang around, a a, 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 a eagle cannot hang around chickens, praise God, and expect to fly. An eagle can't hang around, uh, praise God, a uh, turkey, praise God, and expect to soar, praise God. A turkey can fly a little bit, but he don't soar like an eagle. An eagle can go way up there where the mountain is and fly and see around and everything. And some of you, uh, as in the natural, also in the spiritual, you got people in your life that drink. You used to drink, but now that you done got born again, you don't drink anymore and you don't smoke anymore. You used to smoke six packs of cools a week, praise God. You done cut all the way down and you ain't smoking no more. You used to smoke dope and used to smoke it down till it burned the, uh, the ends of your fingers and you done stopped smoking dope, but you're still hanging around Dopey Dora and Crazy Karen and Kooky Kathy and Stupid Steve and Fixed Up Mike and Bumble and Bill and all it doing is dragging on your spirituality. But I stopped by today to tell you, listen here, if you can't be around godly folk, then it's better to be by yourself. But listen here, we need to have the joy of communion that as we talk to and listen to him, the Bible says in Psalm 46, be still, Isaiah 46, be still and know that he is God. Some of you listening to me today, God wants to talk to you, but you so busy. You got this one and that one. You got, uh, uh, you got, you got to go to work. You got your family. You got all this going on and you got problems. But if you would just stop, hallelujah, and take some time and get to know the Lord, he can talk to you to help get you out of the mess that you in, get you out of the entanglements that you in, get you out of that situation that you in, praise God, but you won't spend no time with the Lord, you won't stop your life, praise God, stop, hallelujah, praise God, well, I got to keep busy, if I, I got to get busy, if I don't keep busy, I'll die, no, baby, if you don't get busy, if you don't stop, praise God, then you will die, praise God, hallelujah, even the disciples, Jesus sent them out to preach. He sent them out to cast out the devil. When they came back and they were telling Jesus about it, he told them, come away for a while. Come away for a while. Even in ministry, you need to stop and you need to recognize God. You need to stop and take a break. Hallelujah. Some of you going on vacation. And when you come back from vacation, you need a vacation from the vacation. Oh, my God. That's not no vacation. Come on. Y'all don't hear me today. You got to get on this tour. And you got to go to this place. And you got to see over here. And then you got to see over there. And then as soon as you get back, you got to go right back to work. Baby, that's not no vacation. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. You need to take some time out and spend with the Lord. So we need the joy of our salvation in this year that we're living in. We need the joy of communion in this year that we're living in. And then we need the joy of service. We need the joy of service. Can I tell you something? That you ought to pinch yourself that God in heaven looked down through the corridors of time, looked down through the annals of time and saw you and said, I want to use you in my service. And here you are sitting on the dock of the bay. Here you are chilling out. Well, you know, it's COVID and, you know, we can't go to church. But that don't mean you can't witness. That doesn't mean you can't call somebody and tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. That doesn't mean you can't have a prayer meeting in your house or in your, well, what did that woman have in that movie, War Room? She she had a war room. She cleaned out the closet. She put up pictures of her family and pictures of other people. And she went in there and went to praying. Some of you listening to me today, this is a good time for you to build a prayer ministry. This is a good time for you to build a telephone ministry. This is a good time for you to build a Facebook ministry and start reaching out to souls. Praise God. Hallelujah. So God wants you in his service. He gifted you. He talented you. He gave you gifts and talents. Praise God. He didn't give them to you for the world to say, oh, look at the talent that he got. Oh, he can sing. My God, he can sing. Hallelujah. All you're doing is heaping it on yourself. Why not take that talent? Why not take that gift and say, Lord, here's the talent. Here's the gift that you gave me. I want to use it for your glory. So there's a joy in the service of God. 
Hallelujah. There's a joy in communing with God. And there's a joy in salvation. I got to check my time, y'all. I'm almost out of time. I got to check my time. I don't want to go over the time, praise God. Not only that, there is a joy in victory. I don't know about you, praise God, but back in the olden, olden, olden time, when they used to ride horse, praise God, hallelujah, the 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 the, uh, the, the, the soldier would go out and he would fight a battle, praise God. And then he would tie a uh, rope around the, uh, the his captor and he would drag them back to the village, praise God. And he put his foot on that on that captor, praise God, signifying his victory. Hallelujah. Do you remember when David and Saul or Saul and David came back to camp? All the women came out and said, Saul is slain his thousands, but David is tens of thousands. Well, I want you to know something. There's a joy in victory. Hallelujah. And God wants you to have the victory. I don't know if it's sickness and disease, but God wants you to have the victory. If it's raising your son, God wants you to have the victory. Hallelujah. If it's you trying to get your degree, it's God wants you to have the victory. There's a joy in victory. And I came today to tell you, hallelujah, there's nothing like a hard-fought battle. But when that, after that battle is over, it's time for you to have a praise party. Hallelujah. Praise God. And you ought to praise the Lord that he's seen you through. Praise Praise God. The Bible says that when David fought Goliath, hallelujah, he threw a stone, praise God, from his sling and it went right into the forehead of that giant. That giant lay on the ground. But after it laid on the ground, do you know what David did? He then stood on top of Goliath and took Goliath's sword and cut his head off. Some of you listen to me today, you done knocked the giant down, but you ain't cut the head off. It's time for you to cut the head off, praise God. Hallelujah. And then he walked around with the head of Goliath. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. When he went to see Saul, and Saul said, who is this strapling? He said it to Abner. Who is this young man? Who's his daddy? Who is this? Who is this? And the Bible says when he went to see Saul, he had the head of Goliath in his hand. Some of you listen to me today. Hallelujah. You ought to walk around in victory. God that blessed you to pay off that bill, you ought to walk around with that bill in your hand saying, God has given me the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, that's the joy of victory. Oh my God, hallelujah. And then there is a joy, I gotta close this, there's a joy, hallelujah, in suffering, praise God. Not suffering because you've been a busybody in people's business, but the joy of suffering, hallelujah, because Jesus said, hallelujah, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. And so you need to understand, if you're being persecuted for the glory of God, Praise the Lord anyhow. Thank God. The Bible said, let me turn to it because I want to show you this. Look at book of Acts. Come on, y'all. Turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 4. The book of Acts chapter 4. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. This ain't us today. We're, we, we just, oh, I shouldn't be, oh, no, no. Listen, sometimes you're going to suffer, praise God. But as long as it's suffering for Jesus Christ. So the Bible says in Acts chapter 4, verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. I'm in verse 23. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with what? One accord. And said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. Can I tell you something? When you're being persecuted for God, when you're going through for Christ, understand this, that listen, God knew that you were going to go through this anyhow. He knows all things. Hallelujah. And so you ought to, and just like they did, they knew that God knew that they were going to be persecuted, but they didn't get all sad. 
They didn't get all mad. They didn't say, listen, I'm leaving the church. I'm leaving God. I'm leaving. No, they didn't do that. They said, listen here, Lord, we thank God. And we count it a pleasure to be able to suffer for you. Because if we suffer for God in this world, we're going to reign with God in the next world. Hallelujah. So listen to what he says. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to do be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness, as they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. I don't know about you people of God. Hallelujah. But you have to understand something. The joy of the Lord is going to come upon the church and come upon God's people because I want you to know it's going to get tight for the church pretty soon. Don't think that, oh, after all of this, everything's going to be, listen here, it's going to get tough for the church and tight for the church. What do you think happened in the book of Acts? Praise God. Hallelujah. But when persecution hit the church, they didn't sit around talking about, oh, why do I got to have this? And why is this going on in my life? And God must hate me. No, they said, listen here. Year, even though persecution had hit the church, they went wherever they were, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you got to leave, if they fire you from your job, understand that God's going to still see you through and going to help you. But listen here, there's a joy in suffering for God. Hallelujah. I got to close this thing. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord. And so David said, Lord, restore unto me the joy of of thy salvation. Lord, I need that joy. Praise God. I'm not talking about the kind that you have on Friday. Thank God. It's for, no, I ain't talking about that because you see there's a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is because you got a new car. Happiness is because you got your paycheck. But joy is even if I didn't get a paycheck, I still got the joy of the Lord. I'm still excited about the goodness of the Lord. And the Lord is watching over me. He's blessing me. And listen here, God didn't promise me a rose gardener, but he said he'd always be with me through thick and through thin. He will never leave me nor forsake me. I, I want you to know, people of God, that people will leave you. People will walk off from you. Jobs will fold up and close down. Oh my God, governments, hallelujah, will implode. Governments, praise God, will uh will come to naught, praise God, hallelujah, but God will never forsake his people, God will never forget about his child, he's always watching over you, his eyes are upon the sparrow, and his eyes are watching over you, praise God, he's going to see you through, what a blessing, what a blessing, I want to send a shout out to my, my brother Jeffrey Townsend, God bless you, God bless you my brother, God bless you, Sister Dinah Gomes in England, God bless you. The Brick House is there in New Jersey. Sister Susan in Florida, God bless each and every one of you. I appreciate you all. Oh, it's a blessing to have you with us on today. Praise God. Praise God. Don't forget on Wednesday, we're going to have Bible study on Wednesday. We're going to continue with learning about the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity. I hope you got my last sheets. Praise God. We're going to continue with that. Now, I ask you if you would do something for me. If you would share this message, get this message out, share it with somebody. But I want to pray. There might be somebody on right now, hallelujah, who didn't identify themselves, praise God, that does not know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That's all right. I want you to know he loves you and he wants to save you. And I don't know where you are. I don't know what's going on in your life. But I came today to tell you that Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God, wants to come in your life. And God, no matter what's going on, he wants to come in and he wants to yoke up with you. What, is, what do I mean by that? That means, like in the olden times, they would take an, uh, uh, an older seasoned calf and they would put it with a younger calf, uh, an ox or a bull. And that older seasoned calf, ox, or bull would, in a sense, teach the younger because they would be yoked up to them. And so the 
older one would lead that younger one and would teach it and train it. Come on, y'all. Jesus said, listen here. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I don't know what you're going on in your life, trying to raise your children, your family, trying to take care of this, bills and stuff and whatever's going on. But Jesus said, "Come in, let me come into your life and I'll yoke up with you and help you. It starts with salvation, though. That's where it starts. It starts with salvation. You must be born again. You must be born again. There's no other savior, no other name, no other savior whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus Christ. So while you're on this with me, please pray with me. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner. And without you, I am lost. Lord Jesus, come into my life and save me. I believe that you went to the cross for me. You took all my sins, past, present, and future. You took all my sins upon yourself. Your blood was shed. You died. You were buried. But on the third day, God the Father raised you from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my life and save me from myself. Save me from this world and turn my life around. And from this point on, I'm going to live for you. Now, if you prayed that prayer, Jesus Christ came into your life and he's going to turn your life around. Oh, that doesn't mean that you're still not going to go through things. We're still going to go through things. Hallelujah. In this world, Jesus said in him, you will have peace. But in the world, you will have tribulation. We're going to have it. But you've got somebody you can lean on. Somebody you can trust in and know that he's going to see you through. I appreciate each and every one of you. Now, also, remember this. If you just came to know Christ as your Lord and Savior, there are five books you need to turn to. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the book of Acts. The Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they teach you, and John, teach you about the life of Christ while he was on earth. And the book of Acts teach you, teaches you what what the disciples did after Christ was resurrected and he was now working in their life through his spirit, the Holy Spirit. And that's where God wants us to be. You see, the book of Acts is today. Praise God. But we need to know about Christ's life as he walked the, walked the world and walked the earth and fed the hungry and clothed the naked and, and raised the dead. And then please inbox me. If you're new, you don't have a church home, inbox me. And I will, I, I will keep up with you. I'll pray for you. I got prayer warriors on here. I think I seen Sister Phyllis Kendrick. Praise God. I got prayer warriors on here. Sister Dinah Gomes. Praise God. Sister Susan Century. They're going to be praying for you because I'm going to be reaching out to them to help build a network of prayer warriors. I want to build some people that will help pray. Hallelujah. We got to get some souls into the kingdom. Praise God. The Bible says that all of heaven rejoices over one sinner who repents. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but listen here. I want to get to heaven and know. I might not meet them, but know that I was a part of getting souls into the kingdom. And I don't know about you, but God wants to put you in service. And I want to use you. Sister Gomes, I want you to help me. Sister Kendrick, I want you to help me. Sister Susan Century, I want you to help me. The Brick Houses, I want y'all to help me. We got to get some souls into the kingdom. Forget a name over a doorpost. We got to get some souls into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is on his way back. And we got to get ready. So I'll see you all on Wednesday, 7 o'clock. The Lord say the same. Hallelujah. If you don't have, uh, 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 if you didn't get the, the, the worksheets, just inbox me your email address and I'll get them out to you. Praise God. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm praying for you. This is a new year. Let's do some great things for God's glory and God's praise. Hallelujah. Don't forget, like I always say, with God on your side, you can make it. God bless you.